The impact of climate change on economic growth is now part of the baseline in En-ROADS. We know that climate change impacts are here, droughts and floods, extreme weather, and we know it's affecting economies. So it's included now in En-ROADS. Two big points that are important. First is that most all of the temperature change between the older version of En-ROADS, where temperature went to 3.6 by 2100, and this new one where it goes to 3.3, most all of that change is due to this decision to include this feedback loop into En-ROADS, not due to radical improvements in climate policy, although those are part of it. Secondly, there's a small compensating effect where policies to uh, mitigate climate change have a little bit less of an effect on temperature. Let me show you how you can see this here in En-ROADS. The place to go check it out is by going to overall GDP globally, gross world product. And we can see the impact of the damage function when we open up assumptions. I'm gonna go down to economic impact of climate change. And here there's a button, climate change slows economic growth. It's turned on right now. So that when we look at the graph in the top left, it goes from 2000 to 2100 trillion dollars per year of gross world product. Right now, the baseline follows this blue line right here. Steady growth throughout the century. If, however, we decide not to include this feedback, we're going to see this blue line leap up to follow the dotted line, which as you can see in the legend is the scenario if there's no economic impact from temperature. Watch as I turn it off and watch the blue line leap up to the dotted line. There it is, no damage function, yes damage function, no damage function, yes damage function. So in the same way over on the right, greenhouse gas net emissions, you can see how it's playing out, but without a damage function, it goes higher and temperature would go without that effect up to 3.5 degrees. What's going on in the middle? Well, the biggest effect is that more gross world product without the damage function leads to effects, I'll pull up energy consumption. So when I turn it with it off, oh, final energy consumption follows this line, but with out the damage function, when I turn it off, we would have gotten more energy demand. More energy demand means more burning coal, burning oil, burning gas, more CO2 emissions from those three main sources, more overall CO2 emissions, greenhouse gas emissions goes up, concentrations goes up, temperature goes up. That's how it plays out along the causal chain. The second big point is that there's a compensating effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up gross world product again under GDP, and we're going to set a carbon price. I'm going to click on the three dots. I'm going to set this carbon price up here at very high, $200 a ton. And then we're going to see what its impact is. Watch greenhouse gas net emissions. Goes down, changes the fuel mix, changes the energy demand, temperature goes down all the way to 2.5 degrees. However, there's less of a temperature impact in this version than in the previous version because of this compensating effect. The compensating effect is that with lower temperature, there's less damage Therefore, a little bit more economic growth. Watch as I hit the replay button and look in the top left where you can see the blue line slightly depart from, from the black. We have a little more relative economic growth over time. That's boosting energy demand a little bit more, adding a little more consumption of energy at the time that the carbon price is really changing a lot in the fuel mix and in energy efficiency. We call this a compensating or negative balancing feedback loop that we've now added and will affect things in the system. There's also an impact I want you to watch for, which is that you'll notice now that there are connections between different parts of this system that are a little surprising. I ran into it the other day uh, where I was looking at uh, renewables 
and wind and solar go up here to renewable primary energy demand. And I was experimenting with some of our new features when it comes to deforestation and mature forest degradation. These two things aren't impacted, right? Or aren't connected, right? Well, watch what happens when I cut deforestation. Watch in the top right, we're going to both uh, reduce deforestation in the world, but also the degradation of mature forests. Cut them, and then you see, as you can imagine, there it goes down, the blue line falls for deforestation and mature forest degradation. But look in the top left, renewables goes up a little bit. What could be going on there? Why would renewable energy be going up? Well, what's happening is we have slightly lower temperature, less impacts, therefore a little more economic growth, a little more energy demand, therefore a little more demand for wind and solar for renewable. And we see the growth right there. Okay, so how did we choose a damage function? Which one? There are economists who have studied uh, and shared their insights about how strong the impact of temperature ought to be on economic growth. Well, I'm going to show you where you can see those functions in En-ROADS. Again, assumptions, economic impact of climate change, and here, economic damage formulation. This is where you can select which study to use. Over on the right, it says related graphs, reduction in GDP versus temperature. Look and see here in the top left, now larger. This is not an output of the model. This is an input. It relates temperature on the x-axis of one degree above pre-industrial 1850, two degrees, three, four, or five. And then on the y-axis, what is the percentage reduction in GDP? We chose Burke 2018, this red line right in the middle. Short version, and do go read. We wrote a lot more about how we chose this, but the short version is that of the four studies that we thought were the most reasonable and recent, this one was right in the middle. This function, it's the blue and red right here. For example, here at two degrees, estimates a 17% drop in GDP and continues to rise through three, four, and five. I'll return back and we can now explore some of the others that are accessible. Economic impact of climate change. Right now it's selecting Burke 2018. Now, if you want a stronger impact, you could choose another one. And I'm gonna change this to overall GDP, gross world product. Right now we're following the blue line if I want a stronger, I'm going to test the effect of a stronger damage function. One can choose Burke 2015, the green line. So watch as I select it, the blue line will, will leap up to the green. And now we get a stronger function. That is, as impacts go up, we have economic growth slowing even more. So the blue line on the right drops even more. If you want a slightly weaker one, you could go, for example, to Howard and Sterner. And I'll select that one here. It's the purple line. You could select the purple line, which would give more economic growth. One can also choose custom and decide that you're going to put in your own customized uh, damage function, say 20% at two degrees, and then 67% at the maximum, and test your own. Okay, overall, we've added the damage function to En-ROADS. That's the reason that we're seeing, the main reason we're seeing a drop of temperature from 3.6 down to 3.3. There's a compensating effect. There are now interdependencies that are added to the system and you can choose your own. Hope this was helpful. Go get them.